morning and welcome. I'm Chris Johnson. I'm your prayer practitioner this morning, and I would like to invite you to join me in prayer. And together we know that Spirit is fully present right here, right now. That all of God, all the love, all the joy, all the beauty, all the truth, all the power is available to us right here and right now. It comes to us by coming through us because it is who and what we are. So I get thanks for that understanding that we are the offspring of the one power, the one creator, call it Abba, God, Allah, Abun, whatever name, it is whose image and likeness we are created in. And it is that which empowers us. So I know that that infinite intelligence and love and wisdom that is fully present here guides this service this morning, guides this conscious conversation, inspiring each one and giving us all the inspiration that we came here to receive. And so with gratitude in my heart, I release my word knowing it is already established in the heart and mind of spirit. I accept it in my heart and mind. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness, it's so good to be back. And I'm getting going a little slowly this morning. So I invite you to join us in our mystic heart. feeling familiar. Here we go. You want to stand up and shake it out a little bit? Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light. Glad to have our small and mighty group here this morning. My name is Reverend Diana Johnson, and I am the pastor and spiritual director of Mystic Heart Spiritual Center. And so I'd like to welcome you home to our community. And even more than that, I want to welcome you home to your own Mystic Heart, because that's where all of your answers lie for you. This morning, um, I want to say quickly, Happy Father's Day. If there are any fathers in the house, anyone who has a father that you want to celebrate, sometimes we have neither of those in our lives, and that's okay too. Um, some might choose to celebrate the masculine energy and the qualities of God that are present in all of us, whatever our presenting gender. 
So qualities like volition and structure and action and a sense of standing in power. So however you're celebrating today, I invite you to just consider this day and hold it in some sort of an honor. It's also Juneteenth today, so happy Juneteenth to y'all. Um, Juneteenth, I don't know if everybody knows actually where that comes from. <clears throat> So it's, it's not actually the Emancipation Proclamation itself, because that was given by Abraham Lincoln in 1863. But it took two and a half years for that proclamation to be brought forward um, on June 19th of 1865 to be actually made into a law that was being tracked and followed. And what it said, um, it was actually a, a Union general named Gordon Granger he and his troops traveled to Galveston, Texas to announce that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Yay. Yeah. So this involves an absolute equality of, and this is a quote, personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves and the connection heretofore existing between them. And so it became a thing that there's an agreement that the slave would now become an employee, so employer, employee, and hired labor. So it, it took two and a half years for it to come from Abraham Lincoln's lips into actually being followed. Today is the anniversary of it actually being carried forth and followed. So why do I mention that in our conversation this morning, besides the fact that today is, is a national holiday? We're celebrating it tomorrow, Monday. Why is that important to us as a spiritual community? Any thoughts? For, for you who haven't been here before, this is an interactive service, so <laughs> you're welcome to call anything out at any time. That we're all free. We were, we're always all free, but we forgot. Okay. And we can so. still be in a place where you're not free because of your mindset. Right. So we can live in a free country, theoretically free country, in many ways and be imprisoned by our own thoughts and our own patterns, our own habits. And we can also live in a prison of the world and be free in here no right. matter what's going on out exactly. here. Exactly. So we can be in a prison in the world. Others, many have lived through concentration camps and but those like Viktor Frankl pulled out through the power of the mind and came right. out a better person for it. So, so I bring it up because freedom is inherently ours. We are inherently free as beings, but it's up to us to remember that and to live as though we are. So I just wanted to address those two holidays today as we got going. So we're going to do a little bit of meditative music and move into our global connections this morning and then from there into our conversation.
So taking a moment now to connect with our global community in a prayerful, meditative way. We gently allow the eyes to close if you're comfortable doing so, taking a couple of nice deep breaths. We let go of everything that has brought us to this moment, bringing ourselves fully present in the here and now. And sensing with me a great web of consciousness that covers the earth, encompasses the entire planet. This web of infinite intelligence. And each one of us is a point of light in that web. Take a moment to feel the light that you are. wherever that originates and radiates in you. And know that it is the same light that is radiating from every being, every human being, without exception, every other than human being, every plant, every grain of sand. The same radiant light is present and shining brightly in the soil that supports life on this planet. And it is radiating in and through the water, every drop of water. And so we can feel and envision our connection through that light, a light that spreads from being to being. And now we can extend that light in our vision up into the sky, knowing that the clouds are radiating as well. that every star in the sky radiates with God's light, that the planets and the cosmos, for as far as it goes, all part of one divine life, one creation. As we experience our oneness with all that is, grounded in the truth of who and whose we are. We build our connection stronger, stronger still, as we join our voices.
It feels so good to sing together, to chant together, to join our voices. So as we feel the, the shift in the vibration, as we prepare for our conscious conversation, I'd like to share an experience that I don't know if any of you have had the same experience or similar one, but sometimes I feel conflicted about something. I've spent 30 years at this point in my life studying truth teachings, all kinds, from all kinds of traditions. Truth teachings. 30 years. What are truth teachings? What are they? <laughs> Spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. Insights into uh, life and existence from different people, different <coughs> saints. Or okay. So they, they are. Um, sorry. That's okay. I, and I saw um, Chris also right after. And then let's just move around. Chris, did you have something to add? Uh, truth teachings, and to me, mean ways in which we navigate through the world, creating more life for ourselves and for others. Okay, so the way we navigate through the world to create more life for ourselves and others. What, I see, uh, what I see it as is um, situations in the world, the way that the world has gone, gone, gone about its, its own affairs <coughs> that have led to certain incongruities, uh, chaos, and and, and and just general evilness, um, where there were people who had um, insights into those kinds of situations, and they brought in information that helped to heal the situation. And okay. They, and, the, and, and that's how we have them. Okay. So insights from people who can help heal the conditions <coughs> of the world that have come about through, you call it evil, through whatever you want to look at that as, mistaken thinking, mistaken understanding. Um, yes, Kimberly. When I started searching for what I was looking for, and I was, thought it was the truth, I didn't even have a clue what that meant. Mm -hmm. And what I found was that I was a God being myself, and that everybody else was. Okay. So that's what I feel, looking for the spiritual <laughs> truth or whatever, mm -hmm. is remembering who we truly are. Okay, so remembering who we truly are right. is remembering is spiritual truth, studying spiritual truth. Yes. Well, I've been looking for truth, and to me, truth is love. Okay. If it's not love, I mean, love is truth, the rest is an illusion. Okay. So love if we just, truth. yeah, so it's a good discernment mm -hmm. um, rather than judgment. You just discern oh. is it love, is it not love? So you just right. go towards the love, the light, and that's what you spread. So that's an interesting distinction, discernment versus judgment. Right. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? So for you, it's love. What do I think? <laughs> <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you what I think. I always start by, first of all, looking upwards, not because that's going to match what I think, but because it reflects to me what our culture thinks and how our culture defines these words that we throw around. And so when I looked it up <coughs> in the dictionary, the first thing I saw was the quality or state of being true. That was not helpful. <laughs> like, no. Okay. So next, that which is true, there we are again, or in accordance with fact or reality. Hmm. Again, it wasn't really helpful, and to me, the second half of that's even questionable. 
because I have to ask our facts and truth the same thing. So, discernment, there you go. Another definition, a fact or belief that is accepted as true. So just because I accept something as true, that makes it truth? Uh, maybe true to me. Yeah, d I, doubtful. I, I don't know. I had a problem with that one, too. So my tried and true approach was to go back to the etymology of the roots of the words. Where does that word come from? It comes from the Old English. And it actually comes from a word that means constancy. Constancy, which has nothing to do with changeable opinions or what we believe is true. So facts are changeable, right? Facts are not constant. They change all the time. But the thing is, in our culture, <clears throat> I don't know if you hear people, but I hear people all the time saying, you know, my truth is, I'm going to speak my truth. Do you ever speak about your truth? Do you ever state it that way? This is my truth. Do we each have our own individual truths? Okay. And nodding yes. Or the template of it. Okay. The template of it. Any thoughts over here? Whisper, whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs> truth comes for us <clears throat> from the experiences we had and the judgment we made about them. That doesn't make them true for everybody. Okay. But that truth of what you've experienced and the judgment you've made about it mm -hmm. is your truth. Okay. So what is something that might be your truth but not my truth? Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Okay, that might be the truth for some of us, yep. that we've experienced that, that we know that, but not for all of us. Some of us might have experienced rejection. Okay, so that's true. Every, we might have experienced rejection. In different degrees. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about my truth, that which is different than your truth, what am I really talking about? Experience. Experiences. Opinions. Opinions. Beliefs. Beliefs. Perspective. Perspectives. Values. Values. Perception. Perceptions. Projections. Projections. <laughs> facts. Changeable facts. So why don't we just say what we mean? Why do we say my truth is different than your truth instead of my experience is different than your experience or my opinion is different than your opinion? Why do we do that? Because our egos want, to, want us to be right. Okay. Good so one, when, Michael. <laughs> when we call it truth, that just anchors it in. I'm right. This is my truth. It's not just my opinion. It's not just my experience. And it's mine. <laughs> and it's mine. No, Go. Well, I think, too, that that's, that's developed out of a lot of us in our experience have been told that we are wrong mm -hmm. or that we need to conform to some other standard of behavior or thinking in order to fit into what is right, depending mm -hmm. on what it is we were raised around or where those influences came from. Right. And it may have developed from a place of needing to defend who you are yes. and what is true for me is mm -hmm. this, pushing against that thing that's been trying to penetrate and tell you you're wrong for most right. of your life. Yeah. So that could be another place where that comes from. Right. I can totally see that 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 is, is true, that people sometimes do have to defend in their lives. And that word truth, it really just does give you a lot more power than to say, you know, my experience has been. People don't give that the same kind of credibility to say my opinion is. But it is really important to remember for ourselves that that is what it is. It is an experience, an opinion, a projection, a perception, a fact, a, a belief, a something else. Something that changes. Something changeable. 
Why is it important to own it in that way? Love doesn't you, change, though. Yeah, love doesn't get, change. You okay. get rigid when you think that you're right and everybody right. else is wrong. Okay. You get real rigid, like you're wrong. I'm right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. All right. So Who you can become so? rigid. It allows for flexibility. Allows for flexibility. And it it also um, encourages separation. Encourages separation. Which is the only problem in the world, really. Yeah. And some people will say, you know, they're just words. Why does it really matter that much? So I ask you that question. Why be so careful about the words that we choose? Words matter. Words <laughs> matter. <laughs> what, just what, what, what are words? How, well, how do they matter? They have power. They words have, power. have power. They have power. They do. They're creative forces that we're mm. given. Whether they're words in our minds that are running through our minds as thoughts or whether they're spoken words, they have the power to construct or destroy or anything in between. So <clears throat> my tendency, this doesn't mean it has to be your experience, <laughs> but my tendency is to use the words truth and reality only when I'm talking about something changeless, something timeless, something eternal, like love. Truth in the absolute sense. And for myself, I have found it very empowering to be more specific in what I'm talking about. Because when I have a condition that maybe I'd like to see changed, if I don't make it my truth and my reality, it's a lot easier to change that condition. Go ahead. It's a dialogue. Well, just in all of this, I think it really matters too what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because there are some things that are true for me that aren't for you. Okay. You know, there are some things like that. Right. I could, I, you know, like just for me personally in my own life, I could say it is my truth that I was born how I am. Mm -hmm. And then someone else can argue that, well, it's not my truth. Mm -hmm. I was born the way I am, so maybe you weren't born that. Right. And it can turn into like that whole thing just for me. But there, there are some things that are going to be true for some people that aren't going to be for somebody else. Okay. But I think that in that, the argument comes in arguing your opinion in that truth. But there are some things that are true for some that aren't for all. Okay. So the truth that you were born who you are, I was born who I am. Pilot was born who she is, that's not changeable from that standpoint. Right. From another standpoint, I might say my experience has been that this is who I am. However, because I've changed so much in my lifetime. I'm talking about one specific area of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Okay, so there may be those areas that, that you would call truth and that others might agree that's true for you and maybe I would, you know, choose not to call it a truth, <laughs> but rather an experience. Well, you could have Probably. an individual constancy. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you have identified with or feel like one way or another. If you're constant with that, that right. is truth. That yes. is true. It doesn't mean that everybody <coughs> came to that same feeling right. or idea for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be what, um, is it Alice? April. 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 I knew it was A. That was <laughs> I, I think that's what I mm -hmm. heard her saying. Okay. Yes, Mosha. I just, I wanted to, uh, to ask you, have you started this, like, saying, that you had a moment, uh, I, I don't remember what the word you used, but you said, um, you started the talk saying that, that this was like some kind of, of uh, um, like conflict or like you, because you've been doing this for 30 years, studying truth teachings. Right. So, um, so what, what was it that, what was that for you? What, 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 what were you experiencing, what were you experiencing conflict in? So I was experiencing conflict within myself um, as I, too, called certain things truth about myself and about my life, and feeling myself 
dug in more deeply into those conditions because I was seeing them as the truth about me. And I'm not saying that there aren't things that might be the truth about each individual one of us. <clears throat> but just for myself, I find that once I made the shift to looking at truth as that which is unchangeable, then that conflict within myself started to lighten, started to shift. And I began to make, be able to make the changes I chose to make in my life with more ease and more grace. So when I look at the words truth and reality, I really do use them in an absolute sense. So I would call love an absolute truth. Um, what are some other things that we might call absolute truth? Not relative, individual truth, but absolute truth. <coughs> that we're point zero light. Humans are point zero light. Okay. That's an absolute truth. Humans are points of light. Infinite light. Infinite light. <coughs> so, what about some of the other no, spiritual qualities? <laughs> Peace. Love. Peace. 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 Love. Peace. Love. Joy. 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 Okay. Beauty. Beauty is beauty. Now it might <coughs> be in the eyes of the beholder as to what I call beautiful, what I experience as beauty. Might be different than your experience of beauty, but beauty itself as a quality, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, and that of many mystics, because I tend to study <laughs> mystics. That these, that, and freedom, we talked about freedom. Freedom is one of those things I would call a truth. We are inherently free, even if we don't experience freedom in our daily lives. Right. So, Diane, are you saying the spiritual laws are considered absolute truth? From my perspective and from my study, that's what I would call spiritual truth or absolute truth. And there's physical truths, physical <coughs> laws that don't right. change regardless if you don't like it or not. Right, like gravity. Gravity is going to grab. <laughs> I could, you know, walk off the roof, and so could you. And chances are, we are both going to hit the ground. <laughs> you know, one that's of us sure. isn't going to fly off because gravity says, right. "Oh, I like and you I better." I think that's you know? what you're talking about. I'm hearing right. that these, these spiritual laws are immutable. Right. They exist. They exist. Whether, whether you subscribe to them, agree to them, right. adopt them, it doesn't matter. Right. They're there. The only thing that matters in whether or not you agree with them or adopt them is your experience of them. So are you able to use them for your own upliftment and your own benefit? Or, you know, are you jumping off the roof over and over and over <laughs> and not sure why you're hitting the ground every time? Right. So you're fighting that force right. rather than working with it yeah. for your better and I think outcome. We when right. I think we get mixed up, we think we're in love, and the truth is we are love. We are love, yeah. So, <clears throat> what if I'm not experiencing these things I'm calling truth right now? Are they still true? Yes. Yeah. They're in true in an absolute sense, that they're available to everyone. They're within everyone. But we have to either remember that, believe that, place our faith in that. Right. So if I don't believe that joy is a truth that's inherent in me, I'm not going to experience it. That's your power. That's right. That's how powerful you are. Yeah. So I was listening to Lucinda last week on Zoom. And uh, she gave an awesome talk. I really enjoyed it. And I heard her say something that she says often and that I hold as a truth. She says, God always has my back. And I just had to laugh because she loves that. God always has my back. And what crossed my mind is <clears throat> how much faith it takes to hold that statement as truth. So why does it take so much faith to hold God always has my back as truth. Because yeah, we have to partner with God. We have to partner with yeah. God? Yeah. If we partner, then we know. Okay. Right? Because we experience it. Right. But if you just expect God to do something for you, you're not experiencing anything. You're waiting for the experience. Because 
God is not over there. Over there, out He's, there in the clouds. He's separate from you. It's we're all divine. We all yeah. include the divine. Right. Yes. I think I lost my train. I'm sorry. Okay. The <laughs> train left without me. <laughs> yeah. Can't see behind so me. So God always, oh, did you have something? No, I was going to say, yeah, uh, God having my back is like, it's a, for me, is a trust. Do I, mm -hmm. do I trust in the God spirit, higher power? Um, or do I run things myself and go, I, right. I'm going to, uh, this is what I need to do, I have to do this, um, and that's taking away that trust, and it's keeping mm -hmm. me away from, uh, I'll, I'll use truth, away from God because I, I'm occupying myself rather right. than going to a place where I think spirit is, it, it is beyond, beyond the words, beyond the thoughts. Okay. There's, a, there's, a, there's something there. It's not not judgmental. It's not, um, it's not uh, self-seeking. Um, okay. It, 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 that's that's the place where I like to. I, I want to get to. So, and that's why I look as God has my back. Um, because that's for me. God. That is the. The total reality. Okay. And to trust that is something that um, I'm struggling with. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I think that well, perhaps you know, I, I've always run this in my in the past, and I look back at my past experiences, and I go, well, th things are were kind of given to me. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've been honestly, truly blessed with something that had nothing to do with my conscious mind um, uh, you know, it's, it's beyond it's beyond that thought and that on mm -hmm. beyond that rational thinking for me. okay so God always has my back is beyond rational thinking beyond anything we have control over do you suppose that that statement is true even if it doesn't look like it yes yes yeah if you experience it you experience it. So faith and experience, I mean, you have a lot of faith because people can tell you it's not true, but when you experience it, you know it's true. Right. Okay, so the experience teaches you, know it's you true. that it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Press. Appearances, I think. God always has my back. It requires faith beyond the physical appearances. I okay. believe in the unseen, and that unseen is what bubbles up in through us and gives us the tools we need to move forward okay. with our life in spite of the appearances. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I was going to say, um, the, the appearances don't always look like God has my back, but right. <laughs> we right. often, five, 20 years down the line, we look back at a situation and go, <laughs> Oh, exactly. right. that did happen for my highest good. Yeah. Right. But we don't <laughs> yeah. see it. Yes. Yes. So the appearances can be tricky. And so there are people who don't like the word God or spirit even. How might you state this same principle without using those words? The universe. Okay, the universe has my back. Divine. The divine has my back. Yourself. You are the divine. Yourself. Is that with a capital S? Yes. My higher self? <laughs> uh -huh. My higher self has my back. My infinite wisdom. My own internal infinite wisdom has my back. Spiritual GPS. <laughs> no, there you go. There you go. How about, how about goodness? Can you believe in goodness, everything working toward goodness ultimately? Mm -hmm. Even when it doesn't appear? that that's what's happening. It's another potential way to look at it. Grace. Grace, okay. So, God always has my back does not mean that my life looks the way I think it should look. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with that. It means that whatever's before me is for me.
If it's in front of me right now, it's for me. It's for my, whoops, for my good. It's for me to learn something from. It's for me to adjust something within myself from it. It's for me to maybe make a change in the actual condition, living conditions in my life. It's for me somehow. So my relative experience is that I still have work to do with this because things are not always as they seem. We're told, we read, some of us often, that um, you know I'm perfect, whole, and complete. I'm an expression of the divine, and so are you. I have work to do. I don't always experience myself or my life that way. Anybody else, or just me? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably just me. <laughs> so a spiritual teacher named Gangaji calls this recognition. This moment when we realize we still have work to do after all these years, our moment of recognition. She says, and this is a quote, there is an exquisitely shocking and important moment in the course of your life when you recognize the habits, addictions, selfishness, and suffering you have identified as yourself. Hmm. When I read that, that was jarring for me. <laughs> the habits, addictions, selfishness, and suffering that you have identified as yourself. So you've called yourself those things. You thought that because you had a condition, a problem, a situation, that's who you really were. We do. The world tells us that's what we are. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't look like this. If you don't take this blue pill, if you don't, yeah. She follows, though, with this. She says, along with this spiritual shock <laughs> of recognition, a desire often arises to find what is true and real, pure, holy, and free. Because you have identified yourself with the negativity and the horror, the search for what is pure and holy for most of us begins out there because the world raises us up, telling us it's all outside of us. And so at that point, a conscious spiritual journey can begin. And we have lots and lots of places to look out there, right? That's how we're raised, is to look out there. We have saints and sages and messiahs and gurus and philosophers and, you know, whatever our path is. Wise women, wise men, all through time. And those people we can look to as examples. And we can say, ah, there it is. They have it. How do I get it? I'd like to share a quick story with you. My first teacher was uh, just filled with Nazarudin stories. Chris told one a couple weeks ago. This is one of my favorites. There was a great Sufi master, Mullah Nazarudin, and he was on his hands and knees, and he was searching for his house keys. And he was under a street lamp looking for his house keys. And a man walking by saw him and asked, what are you looking for? He said, oh, my house key. Nasrudin replied, I lost it. So the man joined him, They both of them, down on the ground under the street light looking for the house key. After a few minutes of not finding it, this gentleman says, so did you lose the key in this area? And as Rudin said, oh, no, 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 I lost it over by my house. <laughs> and he said, well, why are you looking for it here? And he said, well, the light's better. <laughs> <laughs> so we look to the saints and the sages and the gurus and the shaman and the wise people because we think they have a light that we don't have. And it isn't true. The light is within us. We all have it. There's nothing wrong with listening to, reading, studying, practicing, whatever path you're called to. Learning from others and sharing from their experiences can be helpful. It's one new way, one way to gather new information, things to contemplate. That's one way to move from our personal truth, also known as 
experience and all those other things into an experience of absolute truth in our lives, experiencing the good that's always unfolding. The process of finding the light within us is called healing, returning to our inherent wholeness. So what is it that gets in the way of knowing the truth of who we are? Our ego. Our ego? <clears throat> Other messages that we've accepted as truth. Other messages we've accepted as truth. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing? <laughs> you are blessed if that is true for <laughs> you, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> So, how do we get across the bridge from personal truth to absolute truth, or spiritual truth? Self-inquiry. Self-inquiry. Yeah. How much time do we spend just quiet and apart from all of the things of the world and the people of the world, inquiring into ourselves about ourselves? Pangachi goes on to say that first and foremost we have to tell the truth to ourselves. In that self-inquiry we can ask ourselves questions, but if we're not honest with ourselves, we're not going to get anywhere. We have to be honest with others, honest with that spiritual intelligence, whatever we call it, that higher power. Telling the truth about any feeling or any thought or any circumstance paves the way for that self-inquiry to begin. So there's really not anything to inquire about until we're honest. Who am I really? What am I feeling? Feelings are pointers. They're not things to get, you know, wrapped up in, but they are pointing <coughs> us in a direction. So whatever we're feeling in any given moment, what are these feelings pointing to? When we begin the process of self-inquiry, we begin to know who we are. We begin to learn more about who we are. And when we know who we are, we know what we need. And we can begin to be open to guidance about how to get there. And guidance can come from anywhere. It can come from a song on the radio. It can come from a book that you spot at the library or on your own shelf. It can come from a friend saying something out of nowhere that really strikes you. It can come internally as a felt sense of a direction that you need to move. What would make you happy? Eventually, after wading through the muck, you make a great discovery. There is a purity of being within you. It's, it's there, it always has been. It's buried beneath all the many layers. As you dig through there, I called it a few weeks ago a diamond in the rough. The core of who you are is still pure and whole and unbroken. It always has been. To me, this is truth with a capital T. This is absolute truth. We hear so often this perfect, whole, and complete. Perfect, whole, and at least in New Thought teaching. It's easy to feel like um, it's cliche and like everybody else has it together and it's just us that, that has work to do. Sometimes I can feel like I'm going backward. And I know that that's not true. I know it's not possible in an evolutionary sense. And I'm not talking Darwin here. I'm talking about everything growing, moving forward to more unity, to more complexity, that, that form of evolution. I don't think evolution is a straight line. No. Evolution is a spiral. So that means we might go back around and revisit something. Right. From a higher level. Right. Somewhere. Yeah. So that spiral of evolution, we might come back around to a similar situation that we've experienced before, but we're now in a higher perspective. We have a higher perspective on it. So we see things differently. Let's see. Where was I? I'm just rambling on and on. 
I have notes here about we make comparisons. Anybody else in the room <laughs> make comparisons between yourself and other people at times? Mm -hmm. They have this much more, this much. <laughs> Maybe some don't, but I have had that experience. And it brings about a lot of self-criticism, feeling worthless, all of those things. Um, I could stand here and tell you I never experienced those things, but then that wouldn't be being truthful within <laughs> myself. When I get into those places, that, that's when I can start to rationalize. You know, well, here's all the reasons why. So, oh, maybe it's just me talking about myself again. Sometimes comparison can be good, though. Yeah, yeah. As long as we don't use it to either put ourselves down or put another down. Or somebody's arguing with you, and you're not arguing with them, and you stay in your light. Right. That's a beautiful comparison. Yeah. Without any words. Because argument takes two, right? That's right. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to invite us now. I've I've skipped a whole lot of reading today I was gonna <laughs> because I love the conversation so much more. So I'm going to invite us now. We're going to shift to a meditative state, and Chris is going to begin our. our sort of our meditative part of the service. Okay. And then I'll pick it up again. What is the truth? Do we each have our own personal truths? Or if we each have a personal truth, what happens when my truth and your truth clash? Or is there one absolute truth that is beyond our individual perspectives? Is there a higher transcendental truth that never wavers or changes? An absolute truth would have to include all that is in both the material and spiritual realms. It would have to be infinite would have to be the omniscient one, God or spirit. A complete understanding of truth is therefore impossible. Yet Rabbi Yeshua told us, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How can we know something that's infinite? We can never know absolute truth intellectually but we have been endowed with divine intuition, an inner guidance system, and it's our own mystic heart. We hear a new idea and it rings true. We feel it is true within our heart. Some part of us resonates with it. Somehow, we simply know. We are not all that Divine Spirit is, but Divine Spirit is all of what we are. When we feel the truth in a new idea, it is because our God Self recognizes something that Spirit has always known. Absolute Truth. It is a moment of high mysticism. Spirit revealing their Self to us by expressing through us. I invite you now to consult your own mystic heart. Focus your attention on the area around your heart and lungs. Let your breath be relaxed and slow. As you contemplate questions about the truth of something in your life, expect the answers to come. Believe that spirit within you desires to reveal the truth to you and make you free. Scan your body for its reactions to your thoughts. These sensations are guiding you deeper into the absolute truth of your being.
gratitude for the gentle music that ushers our awareness back into the here and now, we bring ourselves fully present. Grateful for this revelation of truth and for the freedom it brings us. We remember that truth is always available, fully available to us. Thank you, God, for everyone and everything. I invite you to know with me now that spirit is moving powerfully through each of us and through our beloved community. Individually and collectively, we are a powerful spiritual influence on our world. As we evolve in consciousness, the benefits of our growth ripple out, blessing the entire world. As Reverend Diana continues her message this morning, we give heartfelt thanks for our mystical oneness with spirit that allows us to recognize the truth about truth. The book of John tells us you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It also says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. These mystical writings are not referring to the kind of knowing that we do with our heads. It's not our mental understanding and our brain. This kind of knowing is talking about embodiment. walking the talk, bringing our thoughts, our words, and our actions into alignment with our truest values, living the truth and living from the truth. And so we join together now grounded in the deep truth that there is only one source, one creator, by whatever name you choose to call it, one higher power, one infinite intelligence, one creative process, expressing in every moment as all that is. And each of us is a perfect and intentional emanation of divine life. In our apparent individuality, we are one people writing a new story for humanity and for our planet. We step into prayerful action as we envision and take part in creating a love-soaked world. I missed this. <laughs> Together we feel and know a world where all beings are peaceful, loving, abundant, joyful, free, where all people practice loving kindness with one another and with the earth. We envision a world where all needs are met. All beings have plenty of nourishing food, the safety of a warm and comfortable home, medical care, education, healthy relationships, right livelihood creative contribution, and a sense of deep belonging. <coughs> we create a world in which every being is valued for their inherent goodness, where the peace we cultivate within shows up as a world free of hatred. And free of violence. Together we feel and know a world without greed where there is absolute abundance in simply having enough. Where every being as a precious creation of the divine is deserving of all of the blessings that life has to offer. And that every being receives those blessings gratefully. 
We are the ones to serve as God's hands and feet, as the hearts and the voices of divinity in the world. And there is no reason that we cannot create this world that we envision. There is no reason. It is our vision followed by our action that makes it so. With nothing and no one in our way, we're creating a more beautiful world right here and right now. As we speak our powerful word and we hold a powerful vision together, and so it is. Amen. We continue for just a moment longer this contemplative practice, taking time for just a moment to access the true self. So allow your focus to rest on your breathing for a few seconds. So you allow your breath to just find its own flow, its own pace. At the center of our own heart lies our true self. We don't have to create our true self or earn it or work up to it by our actions in the world. We do not climb up to our true self. We fall into it. We surrender to who we know we have always been. Our true self knows that there is no place to go, nothing to get. We're already home, already free, already living in a state of grace. With every breath, it is our true self that breathes God in and breathes God out. Telling the truth is your road to freedom. Telling the truth is your road to having an intimate relationship with that higher power, with your higher wisdom, with your own divine knowing. Telling the truth is your road to forgiveness and to being forgiven. Telling the truth is your road to reconciliation and harmony. Telling the truth is the road that opens up the energetic channels for the good which you seek to find you. In this sacred moment, spirit speaks. Let yourself tell the truth. Let yourself win. Let yourself heal. Let yourself have an intimate relationship with the creator by whatever name. There is so much awaiting us, each one of us. Spirit says, dance with me. Free yourself from your own shackles and dance. For whenever you are dancing, you are dancing with me. Been happy. 
lately. Thinking about the good things to come. Bye again. And I believe it could be something good has begun. A while been smiling lately. Dreaming about the world at one. And I believe it could be someday it's going to come. So this vision of a love-soaked world, it has been, I, no it's not, oh it is? Okay. This vision of a love-soaked world has been around for a while, right? Yeah. It's been a dream, and so now <clears throat> I believe that it's time for us to actually do something about it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so at this time. In our service, we take a moment to allow you, should you choose to, share of your financial good in support of the work that we're doing in the world. We have been branching out into some food ministries through the farmer's market, um, the mission. We're about to start picking up bread from, from the hearth and getting that to the mission as well. Um, we're doing a lot of good work, and so we just appreciate all that you offer to assist us in that work. So we have an affirmation that we take to heart and that we speak every week. So if you'd like to join me, it should appear on the screen. As I awaken to God within me and all around me, I see abundance everywhere I look. 
I consciously step into that flow of abundance by this act of giving. I offer this gift freely in the spirit of love, blessing and sending it forth to heal and prosper. It is evidence of my deep faith. It does good work in the world and blesses all of creation. I give from a consciousness of abundance. And so it is. So let's watch uh, Eddie Watkins Jr. So please join with me as we give thanks to the ultimate source of all good, that which we call God or Spirit, but also giving thanks to the Spirit that lives within each one here. I know that God is the ultimate source, but it travels through these human hands and through these human hearts that are led to give. So I give thanks for each one here. I give thanks for these gifts. I know that they are used wisely 
and shared freely to build this love-soaked <coughs> world that we envision every week. So with a grateful heart, I just say, thank you, Spirit, as together we say, and so it is. Amen. Okay, soul's blessing. May your soul always find what it's looking for. May your heart always lead the way. May you live in peace and harmony. And may God always fill your day. May your health be filled with happiness. May success find you next door if you'd like.